Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before you go any further and realize how fucking garbage this content is. And if by chance this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back, you absolute fucking loser. But in either case, thank you very much for coming along. I do genuinely appreciate you being here. For today's video, we are in another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Explained. This is a mini-series I'm going to be running which discusses a variety of topics of important nature that maybe players coming into the game, returning to the game, new players, all of that good stuff can learn some of the basics and get an idea of exactly how this completely crazy foreign world works. And one of the most foreign parts of this to new players is the lingo, the colloquialisms, the slang, the whatever you want to call it, the unofficial terms that people use in the day-to-day -day game that make it make complete sense to anyone who does play it but not so much to anyone who doesn't understand. It is genuinely like learning another language. So today I've gone ahead and found some of the best terms, or at least the ones that I think are going to come up the most commonly whilst you are playing out of tournaments, playing with other players, so you can get a better idea of exactly what these mean and make a bit more sense of it all. Now by no stretch of the imagination is this an exhaustive list. There's plenty more out there, trust me, that are going to come up at some point whilst you're out there playing. But hopefully this will equip you well enough to be able to go out to tournaments and feel a little bit safer in the knowledge that you have a fucking clue what anyone is on about. Now if you are watching today's video and you're feeling inspired to pick up some Yu-Gi-Oh singles or maybe even some Pokemon ones for that matter, you should check out the channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK. There is an exclusive link down in the description and if you go ahead and use that to go to their eBay store, you'll get yourself a cheeky discount courtesy of yours truly. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck into the video. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a game that's actually been around for quite some time now, and it's developed its own lingo, I guess you'd say, much like any other language people use on a day-to-day -day basis. Borrowing words from other languages, or in this case other trading card games predominantly, making up its own words that are easier to throw around, and so on and so forth. So as discussed for today's video, we're going to be doing a rundown of some unofficial terms you'll likely hear being lobbed around the place if you're involved in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community. Again, the idea of this video is to make it easier to understand what's happening in the game, be better equipped to deal with discussion, and to improve any conversations you have with judges who are a particularly big fan of unofficial terms. Seriously, check the judges' lounge on Facebook if you don't believe me. So again, this list is obviously not exhaustive, but it will give you a brief rundown of some that I think are particularly useful to know. So we start off with ban list. So ban list is a term that is used to describe the current limited and forbidden list, which dictates what cards can be played and what can't be played at sanctioned events, and if there are any restrictions on how many you can play. Most people will just call it the ban list because, well, it's a bit fucking easier to say in the first place. Next up we have beat stick. So a beat stick usually just refers to a monster with a really beefy attack. Usually these are monsters with big attack stats, but not much else going on for them. But modern beat sticks will usually have some kind of good effect as well. The board. The board in general just refers to the field, the field of play, both sides of the field, all of that good stuff. You'll hear this being used in conjunction with the likes of breaking the board, which just means to break down your opponent's setup, for example, removing multiple threats or neutralizing them, and the kind of stuff that's preventing you from playing. You'll also hear people talking about establishing a board or making a board or setting up a board. That just means that they've set up a bunch of threats or interrupts or things that are going to prevent you from being able to play the game. So how about booking a monster or booking something? So booking actually just comes from the effect of Book of Moon, but it's kind of just been blanket sort of applied to anything that will flip a monster face down. And that's essentially the gist of it, it's just that it's kind of kept that name where people just refer to it as booking something, because it's a phrase that generally everyone understands. How about the term boss monster? Boss monsters are usually powerful monsters in a particular archetype or deck, usually they have strong effects or extremely big and or difficult to deal with. They are usually the kind of cards that a deck will use as a win condition. Good examples of this would be the likes of Judgment Dragon if you're playing Light Sworn, Ultimate Conductor Tyranno if you're playing Dinosaurs, or ABC Dragon Buster if you're playing ABCs. How about the term Bounce or Bouncing a Card? Well, generally speaking, this just refers to returning a card from the field to the hand. Brick or Bricking. 
This is used in two different ways for the most part, either referring to a particular card which doesn't hold any value at a given time in the game, but it can also be used to a term such as bricked hand or bricking as discussed earlier, which usually just means you have a hand which is made up of mostly cards that you can't use or don't help you or don't allow you to make the kind of plays that you would like to at that time. So think of it like this, if something's a brick, it's kind of useless, it just doesn't really do anything. It's also a term you'll hear in technology when people will say they've bricked a laptop or they've bricked a game console or they've bricked their phone. It just means it's a brick, it no longer does what it's supposed to do, it doesn't hold any value. Then there's burn. Burn usually just refers to damage inflicted to a person's life points via a card effect. Next up we have chain blocking. Chain blocking is a bit more of a convoluted one, and if you don't understand how chains work, then this may be a little bit of a difficult concept to get your head around, but I'll do my best to explain it as I possibly can. So chain blocking refers to taking advantage of the use of simultaneous effects to build them on the chain in such a way that the opponent cannot respond to an effect that you want to protect. So when simultaneous effects happen, the player can choose which order they resolve in. That is assuming there's not a mix of mandatory and voluntary effects. Now an example of this would be if you have two card effects that both trigger at the same time. One adds a card from the deck to the hand and the other one destroys a card on the field. The player may choose to use the add a card effect as chain link 1 and the destructive effect as chain link 2. This means the opponent will miss an opportunity to chain directly to prevent the addition of the card. A good example of this would be something like Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring which would have prevented the adding of the card in the first place but in this instance because it no longer can directly respond to that chain it can't actually activate to prevent the addition of the card in the first place. We then have Disrupt and Interrupt. So this refers to effects that are used in the opponent's turn to stop their opponent's plays such as slowing them down or hindering them in some way. Examples of these might be monsters with negation effects, hand traps and more. How about ditch or pitch? So ditching and pitching is basically the same thing and usually it just refers to sending a card from the hand to the graveyard usually as a discard and part of an effect or a cost. There's also dumping. So this refers to getting a card into the graveyard so that they can be used later on. For example, sending a card to the graveyard using the likes of Foolish Beryl, Armageddon Knight or Snake Rain. Similarly, we have milling, although there is usually a more specific term that this is referring to, but you do sometimes hear them used interchangeably. Milling is usually the effect of sending cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard, but sometimes you'll hear people say, I milled a card out, and they're referring to sending one specific card. You'll often hear the term engine thrown around. Now, an engine usually refers to a group of cards that help out a strategy. Usually they're there to get you to a specific end point, or at least help you get the deck's strategy moving along. These will usually be a separate group of cards to the ones that you usually directly have in the archetype or strategy that you would normally use. Now that sounds a bit convoluted, but sometimes you'll have, for example, Phantom Knights will be used as an engine in a deck because they offer the ability to get specific interrupts onto the field. Now, this may mean that they're only adding two or three cards to the main deck or, you know, one to the extra deck or whatever, but it gives you an idea of exactly what the purpose is of these. It's not the main strategy, but it is certainly going to help your strategy move along. How about the term extender? Cards that are used to make plays go further are usually referred to as extenders. Commonly, most modern extenders refer to monsters that are easily special summoned or cards that allow you to get extra monsters into play and make your lines of play go further. They literally extend your plays. How about the term floating? Well, floating refers to monsters that replace themselves when they leave the field, most commonly when they are sent to the grave. For example, if you destroy a monster and then it replaces itself with another copy from the deck, this will be an example of floating. How about floodgates? Well, floodgates refer to cards that usually have continuous effects to prevent one or both players from performing certain actions. Examples include the likes of Mystic Mine, Rivalry of Warlords, Skill Drain, and Amano Iwato. We also have the term Garnet. So Garnet refers to a card that is crucial to a deck strategy that is not usually useful when it's in your hand, or is generally less useful overall. This can sometimes also be referred to as a brick because it's a card that doesn't do anything apart from one particular purpose, and if that particular purpose is stopped being able to be done, then it's kind of useless. So for example, Gem like Garnet, where this name comes from, is used as part of the Brit Infusion engine, but it's useless if you draw into it since it needs to be able to be sent from the deck to the graveyard in order to be of any use. 
You commonly hear the term meta being used when people are discussing the competitive game. This refers to the current crop of competitive decks which are in the carpool and is directly affected by the limited and forbidden list and new product releases. The meta can also shift depending on if someone comes out with something super big fucking brain. Players like Jesse Cotton will come out with some absolute insane plan to play a certain deck and it just warps and changes the way the entire game is played. Mirror Match a mirror match refers to a player playing against another player who's playing the same archetype, strategy, or theme. So, for example, if two players are playing Light Sworn, they're playing a Light Sworn mirror match. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the cards are card for card the same, but generally they have the same tactic or plan to go ahead and about their plays. A lot of mirror matches are considered to be highly skillful because you need to know your deck inside and out in it in order to beat your opponent if both of you are playing and getting the kind of cards that you need to see in your hands, all of that stuff. How about something being nerfed? Well, nerfing refers to a card or deck becoming less usable either because of a ruling or a card effect, an errata, or something like the deck being nerfed if a key component, if a deck is hindered by the limited or forbidden list. Net decking. So net decking is a term that's usually used as a bit of a derogatory one by absolute fucking idiots, but we won't get into that. Net decking means basically that you've seen a list online and usually without modifying it in any way, you're using that deck. You've copied it from someone who's done something well with the deck, taken it and decided to play it as it is. Now, this is usually used by particularly casual players who refer to net decking as a negative thing because they think there's no creativity involved. That's a whole subject for another day as to why that's absolutely categorically wrong. All you need to know is that net decking is basically taking what someone else has done and using it for yourself because they either know the deck better than you, they've had more success than you, and you just accept that they have a better knowledge of what cards should or shouldn't be used at that given time. Now, that's not always a good thing. Sometimes the format has moved on by the time you see a deck list or they've changed the strategy because now everyone is aware of it. But it does give you an ability to be able to use a deck that you know is, in general, going to work. How about the term nuke or nuking? So this refers to destroying a great number of cards on the field. You'll sometimes also hear this being referred to as a board wipe. This can be used in the context of nuking an opponent's board too, which means that you remove many of your opponent's cards. An example would be Judgment Dragon nukes the board when you activate its effect. It destroys all the other cards on the field. It's like dropping a nuke on the field. Broken, busted, OP, or, well, pretty much any similar word. So this refers to a card or strategy that is considered to be overpowered or too strong in general. Now, this doesn't always mean that the card needs to be banned or is so insane that it, you know, mustn't be allowed to be existing in the game anymore. It's just a card that offers a really good advantage. This is probably one of those terms that's overused. People will refer to stuff as being absolutely broken just because it's very good. But in general, if you heard this, it's usually a very good thing. How about plus or going plus? So this is a term used to describe card economy. It describes gaining in net a card or multiple cards. So for example, if you activate Pot of Greed, which allows you to draw two cards, you've gained one card in total, which would be referred to as going plus one. To quickly explain that, when you use Pot of Greed, you've gone minus one because you've used the card and it's now going to go to the graveyard. You then draw a card, which replaces it, and then you draw another card, which means you've gained one card in total. But again, card economy is a video in and of itself entirely, so I won't go into any more detail than that. Front row and back row. So front row refers to monsters, these are on the front line of the field, and back row refers to spells and traps, since these are at the back of the field. You'll also hear the terms back row, removal, or back row hate being used, which usually refer to cards that are there to either remove or neutralize spells and traps in some way. How about the term scoop? So scooping is surrendering the duel. It's you taking all your cards and literally scooping them up into one big pile, ready for either the next game or going about to your next round. Searching and tutoring. So searching and tutoring refers to adding a card from your deck to your hand, usually except by drawing. Sniping or to snipe. So this refers to discarding a card from the opponent's hand with an effect. So for example, danger monsters have an effect where your opponent is allowed to snipe a card from your hand in other words, they choose a card in your hand that will go to the grave at random. Rotor. So rotors are a card that add a monster from the deck to the hand. The name comes from Reinforcement of the Army. Reinforcement of the Army is one of the oldest searching cards in the game. It's been limited since fucking forever because it searches basically any warrior that you're going to need and adds it to your hand. Spinning. So spinning is returning a card from the field to the deck. 
So, for example, if you hear someone has used Nightmare Unicorn, they may say that they've spun the card that they've targeted. Stacking. So stacking refers to ranging cards by getting them on the top of the deck, usually in an order, and it's usually a form of cheating. Now it is worth noting that there are cards in the game that legally allow you to rearrange the cards so that they're at the top of your deck in a more favourable fashion. However, if this is done outside of the game mechanics, this is a form of cheating. Stacking can also be used in a negative way as well against your opponent by ensuring that their better cards are at the bottom of their deck. Stalling and stall. So stalling is, well, pretty much exactly what you'd think it refers to prolonging the game or biding time. Some decks are built to use this as a legitimate tactic, such as slowing down the pace of the game until you can find a card that you need to allow you to go ahead with your strategy. But when it's done intentionally, such as taking a prolonged amount of time for no reason... So I got banned from my old video I made, where I jokingly made a video, I jokingly, jokingly told the world that I stalled for time. I didn't stall for time. Anyone with a brain would realize it was a joke. It was a joke that was good. It was a good joke at the time. It was the, the new time rolls were going on. Oh, ha ha, cowboy for game. To complete a move, it is considered misconduct. Staple. So a staple usually refers to a good card that can often be used in most or many decks, side decks, or strategies. For example, the Pot Ranger cards such as Pot of Desires, Pot of Extravagance, Hand Traps, and more. Staples are usually the kind of cards that you're going to want to keep hold of because they're useful in almost every single format in some way or shape or form. Starter cards. So a starter is a card that is used to get a line of plays or combo going. Crashing, ramming, suicide, something like that. This refers to intentionally attacking another monster, knowing that your monster will be destroyed. This is usually for tactical gain. Tier 0. This refers to a deck that can usually only be beaten in mirror matches. For example, Spiral, Zodiac are both examples of Tier 0 strategies. Now, this doesn't, of course, mean that it's impossible to defeat them with any other strategies, just that statistically it's highly unlikely that you win a match against a Tier 0 deck unless you're using a Tier 0 deck yourself. You'll also hear the terms Tier 1, 2, 3, and Rogue being used. These refer to the overall competitive viability of a deck, with Tier 1 decks commonly being the best decks of the format. Tier 0 decks, on the other hand, are incredibly rare, usually not more than once a year or once every two years that we'll see one of these crop up. Vanillas. So vanillas refers to a normal monster, just in reference to their colour, and they don't actually fucking do anything. Now as I mentioned, these aren't all the terms you'll be here being used, but definitely some of the more common ones that you're likely to hear bandied around when you're out and about playing. And that, my amigos, is all for today's video. Hopefully, by virtue of the fact that you made it this far into the video, you've enjoyed it enough to hit subscribe, or at least hate it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. Now, there's a lot of different terms and terminology and all of that stuff that you've needed to have taken on today. Don't be surprised if you don't get it all at once, but this should just hopefully give you some more idea of exactly what you're dealing with. Now, it is worth noting that this isn't the only kind of content we do on the channel. We do deck profiles, how to play videos, combo tutorials, locals vlogs, other discussion content, all of the good stuff you could possibly want from a YouTuber. Now, we may be ticking many of your boxes, but maybe there's something you do want to see that we aren't covering on the channel at this time. Definitely reach out and let me know exactly what you'd like to see, things you'd like to see done better, things that you think are going particularly wrong, things you think I should never, ever do again. Go ahead and let me know, and if it's a load of bollocks, I'll just ignore you. But anyway, that's enough of your time taken up for one day. Thank you very much for coming along. Again, I do really appreciate it, and I will see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.